For most Americans, their monthly social security benefit just won't cut it. This creates an income gap between their social security and their monthly expenses. I'm John Gregg, your certified financial planner with APSAdvisor.com, where we help our clients plan for a comfortable retirement. The first income strategy comes from using stable sources of income, and nothing's more stable than social security. So what you can do is continue to delay, receive an 8% bump until you max out at age 70, and maybe that'll get you all the way there. The second is a pension plan. If you have one, congratulations. If you don't, it's too late. Pension plans are fantastic tools for retirement planning. The third are annuities, which often get a bad rap, but for good reason, but they do have some redeeming qualities. Now the benefits of an annuity are gonna really depend on the type of annuity that you receive, but they're going to most likely be stable income that you can rely on and you don't necessarily have to worry about market conditions. The cons are that the phrase buyer beware are no more prevalent than they are when you're purchasing an annuity. So you need to understand everything about it. You need to know the cost. You need to know if there is inflation involved. You need to understand what happens if the market dips to your income and a multitude of other questions. So be your own advocate, do your own research, but let's jump into a little example here just so you could see how they would work if you think that it is going to be the right option for you. In this example, let's leave out taxes and inflation since we want to keep this simple. We're going to revisit the same example with the other strategies, so remember the numbers a bit, but we're gonna retire at 67, which is your full retirement age. Your social security is going to be $2,800 a month. You need $5,300 a month of after-tax income. This creates a shortfall of 2,500. So what you can do is find an annuity that pays $2,500 per month and just reverse engineer it. So you know what you need now figure out what the annuity company is going to require in terms of a principal payment in order to give you that payment for the rest of your life. Creating a dividend portfolio can be a great way to solve for that income gap. Some of the benefits of a dividend portfolio are that these dividends are typically very stable. So these are established companies. They've already gone through that growth phase. And now instead of paying that cash flow back and reinvesting it, they're paying it out to the shareholders. So the downside of a dividend portfolio is that you could be missing out on a lot of those growth companies. So instead with the growth company, they're taking that cash flow and reinvesting it back into the company, which, typic which can provide for a larger overall return. So you don't wanna get tunnel vision and miss out on some of these great growth companies because you're so focused on dividends. Let's take a look at an example of what a dividend producing portfolio would look like to solve for this income need. Let's look at this example again. We retire at 67, we have 28 from social security, needing 53, that gives us a shortfall of 25. And if we multiply that by 12, that gives us a annual need of $30,000. We divide that by three and a half percent and that gives us a portfolio of $857,000. So in order to have a dividend portfolio that is paying you enough in this situation, you need to have that amount in your portfolio. The third strategy is purchasing cash flowing real estate, and this can really provide you with a potentially higher cash flow rate than some of these other options. However, the downside is that you are now a landlord. So if the toilet or plumbing backs up, who are they gonna call? Let's take a look at an example of a good cash flowing piece of real estate compared to a bad one. I wanna stress this is a very basic example and we're not factoring in capital appreciation here because this is all about income and cash flow. So if you have a million dollars in equity in a property and it's bringing in $1,500 a month, that's 1.8% return on that equity. That's not very good. However, if you have a piece of property that's bringing in $6,000 a month, that's a 7.2% rate of return, and that's very good. So you need to take your situation into uh, consideration when looking at cash flowing real estate and the actual investment opportunity because they are not all equal, they do not all pencil out. Number four is supplementing your retirement with a part-time job. 
This can have many benefits. The first and obvious is cash flow. So you don't have to work full time. This is kind of your second act, your second hurrah. You're gonna work at some, some retail store that you love. You're gonna start swim lessons. You'll be a yoga instructor. Something that you really enjoy doing. Not only can this give you cash flow, but you're also most likely being social, right? You have coworkers, you have um, clients and people that you work for. So this can be really good from two fronts, both the financial front and also the social front. The fifth option is called the bucketing strategy. And we use this quite frequently in our practice along with dividend portfolios. But really what this dives into is you have three different buckets. The first bucket is going to be years one through two. It's gonna be low risk investments, pay out a little bit, and that's where your income's gonna come from. Years two through four, this is the second bucket, are going to be a little bit riskier, and this is gonna help fill bucket one back up once it depletes. Bucket number three is longer term, so we're talking four plus years out. This is going to be your dividend and growth portfolio. So we're looking for growth drivers uh, specifically here, along with some dividends that are gonna fill back these buckets. Now let's go through a situation here. If we are in a market condition where the stock market is down for more than two years, you've already used up all of bucket one. So what we do is we fill it back up with bucket number two. And we let bucket number three sit there until the market has recovered. And this is a really good strategy because it doesn't force your hand. It doesn't make you sell when the market goes down. So what we know from the stock market is that it does have its turbulent years, but it always comes back, historically has always come back. So if we're able to sell from bucket three when the market's good, put it back into bucket number one, again, when the market's good, we make sure that we always have this really big cushion for when the inevitable happens and there is a big market downturn. So what this does is it gives you stability, it allows you to sleep well at night, but it also provides that growth that is much needed because inflation, as we all know, can really beat up um, you know, your quality of life in retirement. A certified financial planner should be able to review all these options with you and decide which one fits best in your overall financial plan. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching. I'm John Gregg, your certified financial planner with APSAdvisor.com, and I'll see you next time.